Welcome to Naresh High Technologies. Uh, this is Ram Chandar. In the last two videos, we did talk about how to load dot class file from secondary memory to primary memory with the help of different uh, ways. Like, first I am highlighting the concept like how to load the dot class file by using the concept like development tool. After that, I did introducing how to load dot class file by using calling the static variables as well as a method and third one is by creating an object also we can load dot class file and fourth one is I did talk about a reflection API method one of the reflection API method like what for name method and also I did introduce like class dot uh, class name dot class. So, in this time this is the last uh, uh, video we did talk about this concept in this video what in the in this topic what happened you know dot class file is loading but static blocks are not uh, executed but bytecode is loading from bytecode is nothing but what dot class file is loading from secondary memory to primary memory but static blocks are not executed now up to now we did talk about around only five ways reflection api as well as what here class dot name and also I did complete like these three as to in the last video we did talk about these two in this today video I did talk about uh, how we can load dot class file by using the concept like what inheritance see here inheritance is one of the object oriented principle which is used by the Java language what is the main intention of inheritance see Inheritance means extracting the functionality from one class to another class. Now, for example, here I have one small class, here I have one small class that class name is assume a dot java, a dot java. In a java, every class, every class requires 11 functionalities every class requires how many functionalities 11 functionalities if you take any class like a or b or bank or customer or cinema or credit card whatever the class you take every class requires how many methods 11 methods now every time writing the 11 methods in every particular class that will be raised what here boilerplate of code that will be raised to boilerplate of code boilerplate of code is nothing but what here duplicate code once a duplicate code is increases automatically program size will be increases once uh, program size increases automatically performance will be decreases performance will be decreases so why all these things are happened only the reason is boilerplate of code so if you want to write the same code more than in java language we are not writing two times we are use we are writing one time and reusing that uh, code for reusing that code we should go for concept like what here inheritance so instead of writing the same code if you want to use the same code and again and again then we can go for concept like what here inheritance in java that is the main intention of inheritance and here I am not talking about the types of inheritance what uh, what exactly internally happen whenever we go for inheritance those things we will see in some other video but here my intention is how to load dot class file in the concept of what here inheritance now one point I am always discussing whenever we load it is a very important point and internal whenever we load whenever we load subclass automatically automatically super class uh, will be loaded so to highlighting this concept first uh, let me take let me take one notepad first yes this is the notepad now here i'm writing like one class in the class uh, i'm taking one uh, static block yes static block will be i return now here i'm writing system dot out dot println now here i'm writing like a static block of a static block of a 
and after that I am writing one more variable that is a static int a equal to m1 method. Now, here I am going to be declared a m1 method that is static int m1 method. So, in this m1 method I am writing some user understandable messages like system dot out dot println this is a static m1 method and after that here I am writing like return triple one return triple one. Now, for more clarity purpose here I am writing super class static block of a and here super class static m1 method. Now, I am saving this one control s and I am saving this class on top of the wire here on top of the desktop and all files and finally, I am saving. Now, this is my a dot java file. Now, let me take a, uh, one more notepad in this notepad let me take one class let me take one class like uh, b now b extends of what here a so if you want to make a inheritance concept in java language we should uh, go for two keywords one is extends and the one is what here implements so when should we go for extends and when should we go for implements we will see in that uh, that type of concept in the one one separate video now here in this class what i am doing very simple guys uh, whatever the concept which we have in the a the same code uh, i am copying and uh, after that i am placing into a b now here i am taking instead of a i am taking b instead of m1 i am taking m2 and after that here I am writing like a super class. Now, instead of writing super class, let me take uh, one word like sub, subclass static block of uh, which one B class. After that, this is a static block uh, M2 method, not a super class. This is this is a sub, sub static M2 method. Now, I am saving this one. Now, here what I return B dot uh, Java, B dot Java. After that, I am saving it. So, here uh, we have two classes one is a class in the a class we have uh, some code here three types of programming element I am using sorry one is a variable and one is what block and the one is what here a method and uh, next one in the subclass also I am taking one variable as well as a static block as well as a static method. Now, along with uh, these three let me take uh, one uh, sub uh, one uh, main method that is public static void public static void main string array here i am writing like string dot dot uh, r a m so we can take any variable name but meaningful so here whenever we loading i am not creating an object also just i am loading the subclass just i am loading the subclass now to load the subclass what happen observe here I am writing one meaningful message in the main method system dot out dot println system dot out dot println b class main method b class uh, main method b class main method yes. So, let me write uh, the same main method in the super class also let me take uh, one main method in the super class now this is a public static void main this is the a class main method nothing but super class now a class i am save after that what here b class i am saving also now observe here whenever we load subclass automatically super class will be loaded now first first what happen you know first super class super class static loading phase first super class static loading phase will be happen after that super class uh, static uh, initialization phase static initialization phase will be completed after that control goes to subclass static loading phase and next one is subclass static uh, initialization phase initialization phase after that control goes to subclass uh, main method this is what exactly flow whenever whenever we load subclass first super class static loading phase after that super class uh, static initialization phase after that subclass static loading phase after that uh, subclass uh, 
static initialization phase static uh, initialization phase yeah after that finally subclass main method will be executed now observe here let me show you all those things uh, uh, programmatically now let me take one uh, command prompt and here so where exactly my files are available on top of the desktop so cd desktop now java c a dot java i am compile the program java's a dot java file i am compile it now after that i am compiling the b dot java file now i have a small error what is that cannot find symbol m2 let me go and check in which class uh, b class so here this is what here m2 this is what uh, m2 now no problem in this time now java c b dot java now what i am writing java b now observe here uh, let me yes this is our output super static m1 method subclass static block of a sub static m2 method subclass of static block of b and b class main method so what i written here whatever the things i written theoretically same thing will be happen same thing will be happen observe here yeah first super class static m1 method nothing but here super class in the stop after the completion of the super class loading phase control going to where here super class uh, static initialization phase now here let me explain this program in detail in the loading phase a value become a what zero jvm will provide the memory a value become a zero after that heading will be read after that this heading will be read after that this heading will be read in the loading phase only heading will be reads in the initialization phase what happen zero will be replaced with what m1 method written type then what happen here super static m1 method will be printed on the console after that i return triple one nothing but initially in the a i have a zero now it will become a what triple one after that what happen static block will be executed super class static block of a after that method m1 methods no method will be executed automatically if you want to execute we need to call so previously executed why already we did call it but now it is not calling the reason is i'm not called the method m1 explicitly after that main method main method is not also executed in the static initialization phase once completion of the super class loading phase and uh, static initialization phase control goes to where here subclass subclass here nothing but what b now what happen here static into b so initially in the static loading phase so b will be getting the value like what uh, zero after that a static block will be reading after that method will be reading after that main method heading will be reading now after that what happen in the static initialization phase zero will be replaced with what m2 method return type then what happen m2 method will be executed and finally we getting like a sub static m2 method nothing but see observe see the output sub static m2 method third one now after that what happen now again control goes to where here next statement so here again i'm writing what here triple one maybe you can write some other values also not a problem so again initially b value zero now it will be replaced with what here triple one after that main method main method not executing in the static initialization phase after successfully completion of uh, static subclass static loading phase subclass uh, static initialization phase finally control goes to where here subclass uh, main method finally control goes to subclass uh, main method now what is the last output uh, b class main method will be executed so whenever whenever we loading whenever we loading the subclass uh, in the command prompt i write uh, in the command prompt i written like uh, observe java b whenever i'm loading subclass automatically automatically we are getting the output related to what here super class that means whenever we loading the subclass automatically super class data is also going to be loading so up to now i did highlighting totally six types one is by using development tools another one is by using 
by calling static variables and methods another one is by using object creation another one is by using reflection api and as well as what class name dot class and in this video i did highlighting concept like what inheritance in the next video i did talk about deserialization before going to talk about serialization first i am going to be give what is exactly serialization after that deserialization and meanwhile of deserialization what happen is really dot class file loading or not that type of interesting issues we will see in the next video i hope you enjoyed this video thank you